good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a tremendous pleasure to be here, and thank you very much for, for the invitation to Barcelona Health Hub, and big congratulations for, for this event. The next session is about how pharmaceutical companies are leading change uh, through the digital health, right? So we have learned that ecosystems will compete against ecosystems. So what does this mean? It means that companies will not compete against companies anymore. Ecosystems will compete ecosystems. This is because we have to create additional value for customers. And our customers are patients, right? So, and the only way to solve health problems is through collaboration. So it is extremely important for pharmaceutical sector also to start creating value through ecosystems, partnership, and networks. So um, today we are going to discover a little bit more about what pharmaceutical companies are doing in R&D. It's extremely important to understand how digitalization is entering this area. The second part, how they are uh, also enhancing the operations. And the last piece is we will see some concrete examples how pharmaceutical companies are trying to foster the customer engagement and how they are using new technologies to do that. So for that reason, uh, I would like to invite our four guests, please come on stage. Thank you, thank you very much. We are going to have this uh, around 35 minutes uh, together. And let me introduce the first one, Gemma. Gemma is from, from Angelini. Uh, we have Anna also from Bergen Ingelheim. And then we have uh, Albert from Novartis and Jaime from Sandot. So we have four different companies in different stages, uh, different sizes of also of the company, some of them driven by uh, uh, biosimilars or they're more driven by R&D. And, and, and also a, a good example of how Italian companies are also, you know, transforming, uh, transforming them. So uh, as a way of introduction, I would like to ask you one question for all of you. Uh, and uh, uh, we are going to discuss how digital is impacting your organizations, right? So I would like to know where is Angelini right now in terms of, you know, the implementation of digital health in this, in this journey? Where, where are you eh, in, in this moment? Thanks. Uh Good morning or afternoon, everyone. For those who don't know, Angelini is a 100-year company based in Rome, but we've been in Barcelona for more than 50 years. And we are in this journey that we've seen triggered in the last years um, of how can we improve people's lives with digital, right? We are especially focused in brain health. So this next worldwide pandemic that we are, we are living already, in, in, in terms of mental health, especially with young people uh, during COVID pandemic, there were more people young that, that died because of suicide than because of COVID. And that's a, a, big, a big topic that we need to speak about. And in this journey, we are seeing how we can in, incorporate digital because there's a lot of arenas, but especially around mental health and brain health that we can do. And in that frame of, of being an Italian company, European leader in brain health, Barcelona, we are fostering Barcelona ecosystem and piloting disruptive innovation in, in, in Barcelona. And there's a lot of projects that the Iberian team based in Barcelona, we are starting, we're piloting, and then they go uh, worldwide to, to other companies. So we are in this journey and we really believe in the power of digital, especially in brain health. Uh, I mean, I, I always discuss about, you know, the three B, Barcelona, Boston, and, and Basel. But now you have put another B, which is the brain health. And I believe the digital technologies are very, you know, fostering that area because there is plenty of, of problems there. So, Anna, where is Beringer? Thank you, Orlando. Thank you very much for having me and uh, having Beringer in, in this panel. Um, I don't know, to introduce you a bit about the company, Beringer is a German company, family owned that is uh, creating drugs for improving patients' lives. But above all, as we are a family-owned company, we are worried about the sustainability of the healthcare system. So uh, if I could uh, summarize a bit the therapeutical areas we are uh, working with, it's uh, from CNS and psychiatry. We are also developing drugs in retinopathies. We have oncology pipeline and we have several other rare diseases or rare areas where we also focus. Uh, we are leading the, or we are always present in other chronic diseases such as diabetes and respiratory. 
And basically, how we see innovation, mainly we can summarize in Spain in two buckets. One is, how do we go beyond the pill solutions? How do we help patients to improve their patient journey? And the second one would be in the customer experience field. How can we be more personalized when we are approaching the, our HCPs? And above all this, I would like to highlight the importance of people. How can we do this without people? So the cultural topic, it's key here. Great, so another company focused on the, in the brain, right? So A lot. Good, uh, thank you, Anna. Albert, where is, where is Novartis? Very nice transformation in, in this past year, so where are you now? Uh, thank you, Orlando, and thanks also to the Barcelona Health Hub for organizing such an amazing event here in Barcelona and as Gemma was saying, trying to position Barcelona, not just position Barcelona in the map, but really making it stand up in the, in the global map in terms of digital health. So our purpose at Novartis is to reimagine medicine in order to extend and prolong people's life. And that's something you cannot do without the digital transformation movement, right? But it's not a movement, it's not digital transformation per se, it's digital transformation to make sure that we have this impact on lives. And we, we see digital transformation in three main axes or three main elements. One is how do we use all this new data that's being created and that for the first time we have the capacity to analyze it and obtain insights. How do we then use this new ability to directly, pretty much instantly communicate with physicians or patients or whoever it is that we can act on those insights and communicate directly with them. And third, how those two elements plus all digital health solutions, digital therapeutics, enable us to think about new business models or go-to-market models. Again, I think, who mentioned sustainability, right? Thinking about the sustainability on the, of the system. That's also part of our mission and our objective. So where we are is I think we're quite advanced in all of those areas. And right now we have two main focus. One focus is on scalability. We've piloted many solutions we pretty much know things that work, things that do not work. And now we're in the phase of how do we scale up those that work eventually to have this impact on patients. And the second focus is how do we co-create those solutions with the ecosystem, with all the players. There's plenty of examples of solutions where pharma or other industries try to push a solution to the system and it never got adoption. And I'm sure we all have examples of that. So this co-creating with the ecosystem, with the physicians, with the authorities, with the hospitals, is one of our focus that although it may slow innovation down a bit, the long-term result is way better for patients. Thank you, thank you, Albert. And Jaime, tell us about Sandoz. So, thank you, Orlando. Thank you, the Barcelona Health Club. It's a pleasure to, to be here. So, Sandoz is a biosimilar and a generics company. And uh, in terms of digitalization, uh, we, I think we are in a initial stages right now. Uh, we are focused on two main uh, streams right now. One, it's an internal stream focused on improving our internal processes. Uh, in, in order to gain efficiency and uh, reducing costs. And the, on, the, on the other hand, focus on our external uh, our customers and also on, uh, on HCPs. What uh, we want to improve, what we want to do is to maximize the interactions and uh, optimize the interactions with them, the impacts that we are already have. And uh, in, on the second hand, not only it's uh, focus on this maximization, but also on improving the customer experience that uh, we already provide to both our HCPs and uh, our patients in terms of uh, providing them the solutions they want, the solutions they need to uh, also provide training for patients and also to other to patients to, uh, to gain um, uh, the usage of the, of the current drugs they use. Thank you, thank you, Jaime. So I, I, I've, been, I've been working for more than 20 years in the pharmaceutical industry, and I, I had the pleasure also to, to, to work in, in many countries. And uh, you know, you have good examples of, because I, I know what you are doing in terms of projects, and, and I think this is the, the great occasion for you to share what you are doing concretely, and how startups and other companies can, can learn from you, and, and also how mm -hmm. they will interact with you. You know, you, you have digital launches, you are preparing many launches. At the end of the day, pharma has to launch products, right? So, but the way how you are going to do that is a completely different one, right? So, but you mentioned, Jaime, that 
you are in a different in the initial phase. So also for you to know, not all, not all the companies are at the same level, right? So my question here, perhaps a couple of you, is how you are pushing an organization to transform their cultural mindset because it's not easy to move a very elephantic organization, you know, always looking to themselves in, in that sense. How, how your teams are, are moving forward in terms of culture? I don't know, Gemma, perhaps, you know, you, you can... Yeah, we, for us, digital is not, we have a digital department sitting in the board, but uh, the key is not a digital department or a digital strategy. The key is the business. And, and the ultimate goal is to improve people's lives. So what are the challenges that we have as a company to improve, to get to more patients and to really unlock that value? And putting the patient in the center, we are working in Agile. We were one of the first companies to start working in Agile. Also because the size we have, we are a mid-sized company, but we are very dynamic and we trust to stress that dynamics because to bring innovation and to bring really value, unlocking value in terms of digital, the only way to do is to be very Agile to understand and, and to give you a, um, a concrete example. Uh, we, we've just launched a, a new drug in, in epilepsy that uh, it has a, a very uh, a, a huge impact in patients' life. And ca how can we leverage technologies that as pharma industry we did not have 10 years ago to make that better so that physicians understand better the mechanism of action of this drug, that patients and patient association understand better the value that it has. In the past, we had to do it, you know, in an analogical way. Now, can we use social media to make people understand the stigma around those diseases, to understand better how to deal with those diseases? Can we use virtual reality, for example, to share the mechanism of action with our physicians? Just to give you some concrete examples, but to us, again, it's agility, dynamics, to incorporate uh, that, that way of working and putting the patient in the center. And something that I'm sure Orlando will touch at some point, not do it alone. Yeah, exactly. Do it in ecosystem. Because uh, the value we can deliver to the society and to the health of patients, if Angelini Pharma goes alone and delivers a digital solution, the value would be minimum. The importance is that we as pharmas connect with the startups, with the health authorities, with the physicians, and we understand what's the best value and we do it together. Because we are speaking out the health of the people. And the, it's, it's like marketing first level. If we do it alone in an inch market, the market doesn't grow. We have such a potential in digital that we need to go together and make this impact of digital health in, of Barcelona um, bigger. So it's music for my ears and also I think it's music <laughs> for, for all of you. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's the second time that I heard that pharma is opening up. Okay, so I think many, many people here will, will reach out to you after this meeting because you, you'll open a big door, okay, for, for company startup virtual reality. We will touch upon, and because I want to know exactly uh, wh what you are doing, some concrete examples. I don't know if someone wants to highlight something in terms of culture before we move to the concrete examples, uh, because you, you mentioned also customer experience. And, and mm -hmm. Maybe I can share some examples of our journey. Mm -hmm. Actually, innovating is a journey. It's been in BI guiding principles for almost 10 years, and we've learned that we need to encourage the right people to sit on the table, explain exactly what do we want to achieve in benefit of patients, as Emma was saying, having the common mindset and giving them the tools to really explore by themselves. I think Beringer helps us providing this safer space also for failing because we are used to be always right to pass the exams and we are always facing these evaluations and sometimes it's also good to fail. We learn a lot through digital experiments mm -hmm. and we think we need to evolve in our cultural mindset to be able to face these failures. And this is a key important point that we are working right now to reinforce the culture of innovation in BI. So we, we don't talk too much about the failures and, and I think we have in the pharma plenty of failures. I personally failed with, with, with a project. The project failed, but human being never failed, <laughs> right? So, and this is the difference that sometimes in the organization we have to push, right? So you, your project failed, your company failed, but you as a human being, you will never be a failure, right? So, and this is a, a strong message that we need to pass within the organization. So I would like to move now to the concrete examples, you know, I, I will go in different buckets, you know, customer experience, launches, uh, perhaps also how you are 
uh, doing R and D. You know, I don't know, perhaps uh, Albert, if you have some some example of how how you are managing the clinical trials using digital technologies. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that's important because if you think about it, R and D is one of the main. Um, important pieces of the pharma industry, right? Eventually our job is to get uh, and, and, and develop new drugs. And, and last year, just Novartis spent, I think, nine billions in, in R&D, right? So, and a significant part of it was on the clinical trial. And I think that is where, where the digital transformation can have an impact on how we run the, the trials. And two examples of, of what we're doing. First is we managed to put together all the information of the different trials that we have at Novartis, which is equivalent to two million years of patient data and mining that data to find, to develop uh, synthetic uh, clinical arms for the clinical studies, uh, to find new interactions with drugs, to be able to better predict uh, the, the outcome of a clinical trial. And, and we also, uh, what we're working on is on decentralized clinical trials. And, and here in Spain, Spain for us is a, one of the top uh, countries with clinical trials of all over the world. We have more than 250 clinical trials here. And, and I think it's around 10 to 15% of them are already decentralized. And what we have, the numbers show, and decentralized means that using digital solutions, remote monitoring, bring the, the medicine to the patient's home, basically we avoid visits to the hospital. And research shows, and it's already published, that by doing that, first, we multiply by four the speed of recruiting to the clinical trial. We also extend the adherence to the clinical trial by up to 50%, so meaning more patients finish the clinical trial. And not only that, but also we're able to recruit patients from a more diverse background. Otherwise, it's generally very structured around cities. And that's especially important in countries like the US where you have social determinants of health as a main component of, of health, right? So by doing these decentralized trials, we're able to actually speed up and have better. So I think that's a clear example on how digital transformation applies to everywhere in a pharma company. So I mean, uh, the, the huge take home message here, right? So there is still 80% of people that are not rich in terms of you know, clinical mm -hmm. uh, trials. So there is a huge opportunity for companies that are working in that area because it's not the core business of a, a, a company uh, like uh, a pharmaceutical to develop a, a better way to reach patients, but perhaps with the ecosystem, you can find companies that support you in that direction, exactly. right? And mm -hmm. still it's a huge gap that has to be covered. So I would like to move now to the customer experience. You know, we have heard about services beyond the pill, right? This is one area. The other area is how you are engaging with your customer and how you are creating a perfect customer experience, right? Can you share some concrete examples? I don't know, Jaime, if you want to start, and then we move to... Yes, for sure. Um, in, in Sandov, as uh, I was talking previously, we are always uh, focused on this improving this customer experience. And uh, we develop different projects uh, depending on the therapeutic area we are focused on. And uh, for example, in uh, endocrinology, we've got a patient support program, uh, which initially we, we got uh, different nurses that went to the, uh, at home to train the patients that were children and also to train the, the, their parents in the usage of their medical devices. But uh, due to the pandemic and in order to try to uh, facilitate patients uh, and families' lives, what we developed is uh, we moved one step ahead. What we tried is to uh, digitalize this patient support program in order to try to provide this training uh, in the uh, uh, in, 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 instead of being face-to-face, -face, try to provide this training uh, by digitalization in order to try to, prov to provide this training in an early, earlier than it was initially because it's very difficult to schedule this meeting with the families. We interrupt their daily lives when we want to schedule these face-to-face -face meetings we, if, because it's easy to do these trainings at home when you are at the cities, but if you have to move to the village, it's very difficult to meet uh, the nurses and the, pa and the patients' agenda. So what we've done is uh, uh, this online training that uh, has helped us that around 90% of all our uh, customers are already being trained online. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is something that we try to encourage and that uh, in all the projects we do, we are always focused on having this digital mindset in order to try to move one step ahead and also facilitate patients' life. So basically, you are trying to move the, what we heard this morning in the panel is to, you are trying to move from hospital 
to, to the house, right? It's what I call hospital, right? So, and I think, I mean, it was unimaginable to, to hear that a few years ago. So in case you have also a company, a startup that wants to, you know, move from hospital to the house, right? Not only in clinical trials, but also in the post-launch product, I think there is a huge opportunity, right? So, and we heard about Uber doing services, home delivery, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, this kind of area. Any other example from your side? Yeah, I'd be happy to share some. Uh, we understand that in Angelini that we still, as pharma industry, have a role to play in terms of training our physicians, our HCCPs, and, and how they are up to date to, to deliver the best treatment, the best science to our patients. And concretely in epilepsy, that just to, to give you an idea, there's uh, almost half a million persons in Spain nowadays with epilepsy. So it's a very important disease. It's fourth neurological disease uh, uh, in, in, in European level. So we are really engaged in that journey. And, and how can we help physicians understand better uh, the therapy, how they can prescribe better, and do it in an innovative way, right? Again, leveraging technologies. So we are concretely using virtual reality. We are using AI to understand physicians' preferences to deliver them the best content. It's not cafe para todos, as we say in Spanish. Let's make sure we deliver them the content and the key messages that at each stage of the journey, prescribing, they need. And to do that today uh, with Axio in the first floor, uh, we are launching a challenge uh, open to all the startups and the companies who are uh, in the Health Revolution Congress to help us understand which new ways and which new, new technologies we can use to share science in a remarkable way in, in that field. And again, it's part of our DNA and leveraging the ecosystem. It doesn't make sense that Angelini Pharma, we sit down in an office and we figure out something shiny, right? Uh, let's understand the need and let's see who in the ecosystem can, can help us do the next move. Mm. Gemma, Gemma, I think you, you, you have touched a very nice point that perhaps will be really valuable if we have time at the end, is when you collaborate with someone, uh, just give an example, uh, a startup that have a digital solution with a pharma, uh, you reach an agreement, but the point is how you commercialize that value proposition, how you ensure that this innovation is this new value proposition get access to patients, right? And this, I think, there are some, some, some things that we have to discuss, and I would like to get your yeah. perspective afterwards, you know. Uh, Anna, any, anything about services beyond the pill, for example? Maybe I can share a bit of our journey in Beyond the Pill Solutions. Um, in 2017, Boehringer created a hub internally. It's uh, based in Ingelheim and now it's open in Shanghai. And they try to develop solutions for the patients at home. So basically it was an internal hub that worked as a startup, but it was internal. So all the knowledge and all the needs from our business were uh, shared with them. And after a few years, they realized that there was a lot of knowledge outside. So why only create it at home? They needed to go out, and this would really be allow us other opportunities to get solutions faster and better. So now we are uh, combining both the internal solutions and also the uh, scouting with external uh, startups, and I'm very happy to share with you that this had a very nice um, example, which I would like to share. That is, we had a partnership with a US company that developed the first digital solution for negative symptoms for schizophrenia. So we are really looking forward to know exactly how can we deliver these solutions, as you said earlier, Orlando, here in, all the, in the Spanish market. And, and in that sense, and to not look like ecosystem mindset and collaboration, it's empty words. Yeah. We have a concrete example with Beringer that I'd be happy to share and link it to what you mentioned, Orlando. And still there's like, for example, to bring a digital therapeutic in Spain, it's hard. There's not a framework, a regulation framework. And that is an external, we know UK, we know Germany are very advanced, but in Spain, there's not that setup. And, and that's a challenge, external challenge. And here we partner up different pharmaceutical companies like Beringer with different uh, education institutions like ESA, like Vodafone, like partners from all the ecosystem to try to make us a leap forward so that we can have a framework 
that we can bring all those digital therapies in terms of neuro and brain health. 70% of DTX approved are in brain health. So it's for sure has a role to play, but we need to do that framework and here is where companies were starting to collaborate. So let, let's, let's stay there because I think this is the big problem to solve. So um, I, I, I remember when uh, during the pandemic, many companies that were working in, 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 in telemedicine were calling the pharmaceutical companies. Huh? And pharmaceutical companies were listening to them. <laughs> and they wanted to bring these solutions together to the market. But since, just an example, it, uh, Italy and Spain are very fragmented, decentralized, idiosyncratic, under resource constraint environment, very difficult. And you have many systems within the same mm -hmm. country, right? So, and, and did not succeed, did not succeed, because if we see the, the, the succeed rate was very low. So it was a good intention, as not, was not able to see the light. Mm -hmm. So what do you think needs to change so you can really bring this collaboration to the market? Actually, Orlando, I think it's an important point that we have to take into consideration. We need a framework, and this cannot be created by ourselves only. I'm happy that the example that Gemma shared, pharma sitting together, but it needs to sit together with all the ecosystems, governments, because we need a clear pathway how to bring these solutions to patients. The pills, how we understand pharma until now were only treatment with a pill, we get diagnosed and we get the treatment. But I think there are a lot of opportunities outside the digital therapeutic beyond the pill solutions that we need to address. And in a regulatory point of view, European and Spain framework needs to be created, needs to be clear what do we need to achieve. And we are talking a lot about sustainability and what about equity if we don't push these innovations to come to our country, we will miss a lot of opportunities and we will find, face the inequity of the system. So if, if I may add, because yes, yes. I, I, I fully agree, right? but I, I think also as a pharma company, to, to, to look, we have to look internally and criticize part of the work we did. And I think for a, for a while we were pushing solutions on our own. Right? And you can see that when you have and we talked about it last time that we were in the same panel, Gemma. You have every company in MS has developed their own uh, multiple sclerosis app or every migraine app or everything. We try to push those point solutions that from a pharma company makes sense and we collaborate with a startup, but they do not necessarily add the value or have the impact on the ecosystem and on, 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 on patient, right? And I think here is where we collaborating more and it, it may be slower, but collaborating with the regions, collaborating with the hospitals, going on open innovation challenges that, that they do, and, and we have examples here with EIT Health or Insomnia, on actually sitting down with them, try, figuring out the solution that we are trying to tackle that is gonna have an impact without any idea in mind of how the solution is gonna be, just what the problem is, and then calling for startups, calling for everyone in the system, sitting in the same table and, and, and solving the problem, right? I agree with the regulatory framework, but I think we also, we're starting to do things differently. We've been doing them differently for a while of artists, but we can definitely still improve to make sure that, that we have this impact that we're looking for. And I absolutely agree with you, with all of you, with what you said, because I think that all the solutions that we want to create as pharma companies, our focus is patients. And these solutions, they cannot be created by yourself in vitro, staying at the office and thinking on many solutions. We need to co-create this with all the stakeholders that are involved in the ecosystem. Because without that, the solutions are not going to be su successful. And we are not going to be able to deploy any solution that is going to provide something better for patients. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, and it, this is not only from the pharma side, eh, because many, many of you are, part, you are part of the ecosystem. But when you sit together with the pharmaceutical companies, there is the tendency in the actors of the ecosystem that see the pharmaceutical company as those who pay the party, right? And, and pharma not necessarily has to pay the party because what our main goal is to, to solve a problem. And sometimes the definition of the problem is not clear enough, right? So then if we identify what is the problem to solve, we can work together. And the nice thing that I listen here is that the pharmaceutical companies not necessarily, necessarily has to play the role of the leader in the ecosystem, right? Perhaps can be a, a small startup that is starting that can take the lead and you will be willing to fund also that company, right? So, but fund 
not necessarily means money, right? Sometimes facilitate how to uh, launch their product into the healthcare system, right? In region, in hospital, which is not, not easy at all, yeah. right? And, and I know you mentioned at the beginning, you said, on, on the, also the go-to-market models, right? How is digital transformation changing the, the go-to-market models? And so we had uh, Marie France, who's our um, CEO of the, the Innovative Medicines Division. She came yesterday, and she's a visionary, and she mentioned how our role as pharma is moving from launching a product to solving the problems that patients uh, physicians and healthcare systems have. And a part of it is the product, but we need to solve everything else around. And, and an example here, very clear, for me it's cardiovascular, right? And I was waiting more or less until we were here, because that's one patient in Spain dies from cardiovascular disease every four minutes. So that means we now it's been already nine patients since we've been talking, nine people have died in Spain because of cardiovascular. And there's multiple drugs around and with less or more efficacy, but there's multiple drugs, but it's clear that there's a system or an ecosystem problem. And in that case, for example, in the UK, what we did there, and we're exploring similar deals in other countries, in the UK, what we did is partner with the NHS, partner with the ecosystem to say, how can we use data, how we can mine data that we provide the drug, we provide education, we provide multiple things, but the system also looks actively, looks for those patients in order to solve a problem. And, and make this match. Actually, it's not just the drug, it's all the efforts around the drug, sitting everyone on the table, right? And I think that's what we need to replicate moving forward with all the services beyond the pill, with a new regulation, with all the services at home. We have to aim for that impact on, on patients that it just is not about launching a drug, it's changing the lives of patients. You, you all, uh, please, Anna. I just wanted to add, and I think it's a great point what you mentioned, that we have to bring patients on the table, but everyone on the table from the beginning because the problem is common for all of us and even pharma and we were talking about ecosystems. I think this is a great example of we are all here together from startups to academia to pharma to see to discuss which are our challenges, which are the challenges of our patients. Mm -hmm. And we have to consider also that all these people needs to understand the common ground and needs to yeah. be working together. So I fully agree and mm -hmm. thanks for the example. I think here we need to thank Barcelona Health Hub and Axio and to, we need to keep having forums like this in which we can speak in debates but also in the previews, in the after, in the coffee uh, to, to share that, to share challenges, to connect all the, the ecosystem. This, this is the first one but it needs to happen more because mm -hmm. it's really where impact happens. I mean, the, 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 the challenge is, at a certain moment, uh, it's extremely important that in Spain and in Barcelona, whatever, we have to see key success stories, mm -hmm. strong and perhaps unicorns in, in the pharma sector supported by uh, startups or startups becomes unicorn in the health. So, I mean, it's time to, to, to make that, that happen. So we have uh, three minutes. I would like to use one, one minute because you are going to launch products, okay? And the way how you are launching products is completely different compared to uh, previous the pandemic, right? So, uh, wh what what do you need from digital uh, ecosystem to launch products, right? So, wh what is your headline? On that? I would say that the role of pharma, as we are speaking in the panel, has changed. So, our role was to sh to, to just share drugs, to, to take new drugs to market. That ha is already changing now and will change more. Our role goes more to treatment. And, and to, to bring that innovation to the market with services that have value for the healthcare system, for pharmacies. So again, one of the things that we need to think when we launch a new drug is uh, ecosystem mindset, but also think uh, the challenges are probably the same or, or similar, but how can we leverage on technology that we did not have 10 years ago now? And here, Again, metaverse, virtual reality uh, can, for us at least, in, 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 in brain health are playing a key role in, in terms of training the PHC. So you have solution on metaverse and virtual reality go to Gemma. Eh? <laughs> uh, anyone else that wants to highlight something? 
you want to go? Or? Maybe I can, I can share. Uh, we've been talking with all the colleagues in, in go to market department, and we are a huge team. And I think one of the key success factors when you are preparing a launch is take into consideration all the channels that we have around. So we have a different way of interacting with physicians and technology and innovation is helping with met metaverse. So we need to really sit on the table, all the cross-functional teams to build and prepare all the channels with a personalized customer experience uh, pathways. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, I, abs I absolutely agree with you. In the, I think that the culture we have in, in Spain, we are very focused on a face-to-face -face interaction for sure. And maybe in the past, what we used to is that digitalization, all the services focus on digital, it was like an option. But I think that now, if we want to launch a product, this is a must. We need digitalization, we need services beyond the pill, focused on all these things if we want to be successful. So uh, I think that we have moved in a very quick way from a face-to-face -face interaction to a hybrid model that I think is the key for success in Spain. So from, from my side, and I've always struggled a bit with the term digital health, right? because I think nowadays all health is digital pretty much. It just, so it's, it's a concept that the same way that the product is not, a, a, is not the end. Launching a product is what we use to save patients. Digital health is not the objective. The objective is to save people's lives. And I think that's what puts us, all, of, all of us here in this table, all of us brings you here, and that's what we ask on how can we leverage all the tools at our disposal, be them digital, not digital, whatever it is, in order to, to save lives. And this creates a change, a change of culture in the approaches needed, going back to the beginning. So, that's so good. I, I, I think that there are many highlights of, of this session. And one of the, the, the things that I like the most is that you have understand finally that companies Pharma companies will not compete with pharma companies anymore, but you have to create your own ecosystem to compete against other ecosystem. And you are willing. And finally, the time is, is the right moment for, for you to incorporate this innovation that's coming from the, from, the, from the external environment, from the ecosystem. And, and, and thank you again for everybody, uh, to everybody for listening to us. And thanks to you for, for being here and share your, your story. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.